Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tax in 10 with me, Rachel D'Souza and Andrew Robbins. We are both tax partners in RSM's London office and have a wealth of experience in dealing with a wide range of private client matters. As always, your feedback is valuable to us. Please keep it coming, especially if you have thoughts on any topics you would like us to cover. Today, we're going to look at the OTS report and CGT. That the OTS has issued the first of two reports on reform of CGT. The second is due in the new year. Because of what has been looked at, it is likely that there will be some big changes in the regime of CGT, so we thought it's worthwhile taking a look at the report. But before we actually get into what the report says, we thought it would be fun to do a quick review of how the papers have reported the contents. The first thing I would say, Rachel, uh, not everybody in the world will know what the OTS is. So perhaps it is worth us telling them that the OTS is the Office for Tax Simplification. Okay. And the reason it's written this report about capital gains tax is because the Chancellor wrote to the OTS and said, look at this, see if you can make life simpler. So their remit was actually in part to simplify capital gains tax. If you look at the results of the report, I think they've gone beyond that and they are looking at measures that could actually raise some taxes, which leads me to probably my favourite comment that I read in the, the press about this, which is to tax the gain at income tax rates is pernicious given that the capital is being tied up. So there's definitely concerns out there that equalising tax rates is not a good thing. But mainly I like the comment because how often do you see anybody using the word pernicious these days? I think it's fantastic. Another one that I quite like. Um, a hedge fund manager earning millions from their wealth should pay higher tax rates than a nurse. Rules mean that some people earning millions get away with rates as low as 10%. So I think we can say there are some um, alternative comments out there. Um, RSM in its own right did prepare a submission to the OTS to help it inform its, its um, reports before it was published. What we did was point out that the current system is biased away from entrepreneurs and towards investments. So that would say an adjustment to the CGT rules are necessary. I think it is worth telling people that in 2018-19, CGT was only paid by 276,000 people. So that's not very many at all. And moreover, 40% of the tax take came from people with gains of more than five million pounds. So very, very much at the wealthy ends of the spectrum. I think that's really interesting because one of the things about the press on all sides of it has been to, to big up the issue, which I guess is what you do if you're a journalist. Um, and even if you doubled or trebled the number of people affected, you might raise extra tax, but it might increase the number of people being taxed from your 270 odd thousand to maybe three quarters of a million. And across the whole of the UK population, that still means that the vast majority won't be affected. So I think it's worth bearing that in mind. But with yeah. that in mind, um, what does the report actually say? <laughs> well, it's a good question, and I think it's fair to say that the the report, and remember this is the first of two, runs to over 120 pages. I have not read the report in great depth. Um, I have looked at it, you know, in, in, in a little bit of depth, but I haven't read each page. Um, we don't have time to discuss the full report. Um, so I think the way to look at this is to pick out uh, the areas which are the main focus. And just before we pick out those three areas, just as a reminder, what the OTS was asked to do was to look at the areas where the present rules can distort behaviour or don't meet their current policy intent. 
OK, so with that in mind, the three big areas that we're going to discuss is aligning the tax rate to income tax, reducing the annual exempt amount, that's the tax free amount that everybody gets, mm -hmm. and removing the uplift on death. I think it's very fair to say that the topic that has caused most press comment is aligning the CGT rates to income tax. Which makes me laugh because, of course, this isn't a new idea and CGT tends to go in cycles. It used to be the case back in the late 1990s that income tax and CGT rates were the same, 20% and 40% in those days. It's also worth bearing in mind that the OTS have also said that if tax rates were to be aligned, some measure to adjust for inflation should also be introduced. Again, I'm saying it's like we always used to have it. They used to be indexation amounts, and then when that was done away with, we had taper relief. The annual allowance is currently 12,300 per person per year. And I mean, the vast majority of people don't come anywhere near using that amount. So the suggestion is to reduce that significantly and the OTS give various options on this. Uh, they're suggesting it might go down to £4,000, £5,000 or, or even £1,000. But even if you reduce the annual exemption to £1,000, the OTS estimates that you would only have about three quarters of a million pay people paying CGT. So as we mentioned earlier, that's a lot, it's a big increase but it's still actually mm. quite a small overall number. Yeah, um, the, that current level is very generous, but on the other hand, going to pull more people into the net, the OTS states that reporting of gains should be easier. Um, investment managers, for example, sh should be required to make the information available to taxpayers and HMRC. At present, there is no obligation on investment managers to provide any relevant CGT information, whereas they are required to provide certain income information. Mm. Um, our third big area is what happens to CGT on death. So currently, any asset which is inherited on death is received by the heir at its market value at that time. And that's irrespective of whether the asset has suffered IHT or not. And this is a subject which really gets people quite hot under the collar. And I guess understandably so, because people look at it as being taxed twice. Um, which, of course, you are. You're subject to inheritance tax and to capital gains tax. But I have quite a lot of sympathy with the OTS on this one, actually. If I sell an asset today and get run over by a bus tomorrow, I'll pay capital gains tax and inheritance tax. But if I get run over by the bus today before I sell the asset, there'll be no capital gains tax charge, only an inheritance tax. Mm. So I'm not entirely convinced about the logic as to why you shouldn't pay both taxes. Um, it does feel like you're creating an extra tax liability but there is at least an argument that it's actually making the system fairer. OK, so I think in summary, what we can conclude is that there are some big changes proposed and these might come into effect. So what should we be advising our clients to do? Um, we're back to that age old problem of, of the tax tail wagging the dog sell an asset today and pay 20% compared to leave it for a year and potentially pay 40%. So surely with that scenario, the advice has to be sell, sell, sell. But more sensibly, you should look at whether you have assets that you plan to sell shortly and maybe bring that date mm. forward. I think it's also fair to say, of course, that, you know, if you've got stocks and shares, those are easily, you can easily sell those. It's not the same if you've got, for example, a family business. Totally agree. I would say, though, if you've got 
um, illiquid assets, if you've got something like a family business and you really do want to trigger a gain, there are ways you can legitimately do it. Mm. Um, for example, you can transfer assets into trust, which will trigger a disposal for CGT purposes. This is completely legitimate. You do pay tax at, at the time that you make the disposal, so you're not avoiding charges. You're just choosing your timing. However, you are triggering a tax charge when you've got no cash in the bank to pay it, and you need to be really careful about this. I think also, as a final point, we may see anti-forestalling rules, which is a posh way of saying mm. that if the rules change, there might be a degree of uh, looking back in time to stop you trying to avoid the higher tax rate by saying we will apply these rules from an earlier date. So I think just be careful. Yeah, yeah I think that's a fair point. OK, so that's wrapped up um, the OTS report. Um, what have you got for me that's been keeping you amused this week? Um, I want to, to picture, picture a scene for me. It's a Saturday night. It's around mm. seven o'clock in the evening. And yes. Andrew is in his kitchen making his tea. I've got the radio on and something is making me uh, jerk around convulsively from one side of the kitchen or the other. And it's really quite a scary fright if I've got a frying pan on the go. On the six music, the Craig Charles Funk and Soul show is on on a Saturday evening. Um, I would not say I was either funky or soulful, but the show is fantastic. The music is just so joyous and I mean, it even gets me dancing. Craig Charles Funk and Soul show on Six Music, it's just brilliant. If you need something to sort of put a smile on your face, uh, it's two or three hours of, of just pure pleasure. I really recommend it. OK, that's one. Sounds like I would try out that one. Brilliant. Thanks for listening, everyone. As I've said before, please do let us have your comments and feedback or let us have any ideas of topics you want us to cover. We can be contacted at rachel.dsouza at rsmuk.com or andrew.robbins at rsmuk.com. See you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.